In this lecture, we'll discuss about single phase full bridge inverter with RL load. So this is the schematic diagram. It consists of four switches S1, S2, S3 and S4 and four diodes D1, D2, D3 and D4. Here the load is the RL loader. Okay. So here the switches S1 and S4 are connected in series. Again, this series combination is connected in parallel with the supply voltage VDC. Similarly, S2 and S3 are connected in series. This series combination is again connected in parallel with VDC. So this is what we have discussed. It consists of four switches S1, S2, S3 and S4. Uh, S1, S4 forms one leg and S2, S3 forms another leg. So these switches are connected in series. Again, this is connected in parallel with the supply voltage. So now we will see the modes of operations. So this is mode 1. So mode 1 is from small t is equal to 0 to t by 2 okay so during this mode s1 and s2 will be turned on so once these switches are turned on the current will start flowing through the circuit the current will start flowing from vdc plus it will flow through s1 it will flow through the loader so through the load it flows from the terminal a to b it will continue to flow through s2 and completes its path through vdc minus r so due to the presence of this load inductance, so the current will start uh, flowing through this load. As a result, the energy will be stored in the inductor. Okay. So there will be voltage drop across the inductor with the polarity as shown in the figure. So now if you see here, the terminal A is directly connected through this switch S1 to the positive terminal of the supply voltage. And similarly, this terminal B is connected through S2 to the negative terminal of the supply voltage up so the load voltage will up load voltage will be equal to plus vdc so this is what we have discussed s1 and s2 will conduct so this is the current direction and again at t is equal to t by 2 okay at the end of this mode s1 and s2 will be turned off due to forced commutation so we are turning off the switch s1 and s2 so once the switches are turned off the load voltage v0 will be zero but due to the presence of this load inductance the load current will continue to flow so it will not become zero immediately as and when the switches are turned off okay so due to the presence of the energy stored in the inductance so the current will continue to flow so now at t is equal to t by 2 so as we have already discussed at t is equal to t by 2 when the switches are turned off so the current will continue to flow through the load so due to the due to this uh, voltage drop across the inductor the diode d3 as well as the diode d4 will get forward biased so the current will continue to flow through the load in the same direction that is from a to b it will flow through the diode d3 flow through the supply voltage diode d4 and completes its path okay so now during this time period that is at t is equal to t by 2 the energy part of the energy stored in the inductance is fed back to the source so this is a current direction okay current continues to flow through the diodes d3 and d4 and during this period energy stored in the load is fed back to the source so now we'll see mode 2 operation so mode 2 operation is in between t by 2 to t so at t is equal to t by 2 these uh, two switches s3 and s4 will be turned on so once this is turned on again the current will start flowing from vdc plus it will flow through the switch s3 through the load uh, this time uh, the load current will flow fr flow from the terminal b to a so previously it was from a to b okay again it will continue to flow through s4 and completes its path through vdc minus so if you see here this terminal a is connected through this s4 to the negative terminal of the supply voltage and similarly this terminal b through this s3 is connected to the positive terminal of the supply voltage so the load voltage v0 will be equal to minus vdc okay whereas the current will uh, flow in the reverse direction both voltage and current are in the 
reverse direction as that of mode 1 operation. Okay. So again the inductor will start storing energy and the EMF will get induced across the inductance with the polarity as shown in the figure. So this is what we have discussed. Yes, 3 and S4 are triggered and this is the direction of the current and at T is equal to capital T. That is during the end of this mode S3 and S4 will be forced commutated. Okay, once these switches are forced commutated, load voltage is 0 whereas the load current will continue to flow in the same direction due to the presence of load inductance. So now we will see at the instant T is equal to capital T. Okay. So due to this uh, EMF, this diode D1 and this diode D2 will get forward biased and hence the current will flow, continue to flow in the same direction as before. Okay, That is from B to A, it will continue to flow through this diode D1, through the supply, through the diode D2 and completes its path. Okay, so during this uh, period, the energy stored in the inductance is fed back to the source. So this is what we have discussed. So these diodes are called as energy recovery diodes or feedback diodes. Okay. So this is the waveform. So during this mode, uh, the voltage will be positive and during this mode, the voltage will be negative. Okay. So this is a load current. So when S1 and S2 are in the on state, the load current will start racing in the positive direction. Okay. So at T is equal to T by 2, when these switches are turned off, the load current will start decreasing. Okay. So uh, once these switches S3 and S4 are turned on, it will start racing in the negative direction. So at this particular point, when uh, at T is equal to capital T, when these switches are turned off, so the current will continue to flow through the diodes D1 and D2. Okay. So this is cyclic in nature and this cycle will get repeated. Okay. So now we will derive the RMS output voltage. So here uh, V0 is the uh, symmetrical waveform. So we will consider only one half of the cycle for deriving RMS value. So V0 RMS can be written as under root of 1 by t by 2 integral 0 to t by 2 vd square vdc square dt okay so vdc square is a constant term so integrating dc we will get t so on substituting the limit uh, from 0 to t by 2 we will get t by 2 here okay so uh, under root of vdc square by t by 2 into t by 2 so t by 2 t by 2 will get cancelled so square root of vdc square will give you vdc so V0 RMS will be equal to VDC. So next is the Fourier series representation of the output voltage. So uh, Fourier series we have already derived in previous lectures. I will give, give the link in the description box. So now uh, we can write the formula directly. So V0 of T, this is a Fourier series expression for the load voltage is given by summation of n is equal to 1, 3, 5 and so on. n is the harmonic harmonics. So here we have only odd harmonics. So up to infinity 4 Vdc by n pi into sin n omega t. Okay, this is in the form Vm sin omega t. Okay, this is a maximum value. Maximum value is 4 Vdc by n pi. So here, uh, as I said earlier, here we have only odd harmonics. Uh, even harmonics will be cancelled out uh, automatically. So next we will see RMS fundamental component. So RMS value of the fundamental component is given by uh, n is equal to 1. If we substitute n is equal to 1, we will get the fundamental component. So now RMS value, we all know, RMS value is given by Vm by root 2. So Vm is uh, 4 Vdc by n pi. So here n is equal to 1. So if we substitute n is equal to 1, we will get 4 Vdc by pi into root 2. Okay. So on simplification, we will get 0 0.9 Vdc. So next, uh, Fourier series expression for the current. So current I0 here is given by V0 by Z. So in this case, Z is the 
r and l connected in series so we can write z is equal to under root of r square plus xl square so xl is omega into l so we are considering the fourier series expression so n so harmonic number so under root of r square plus n omega l whole square so here again sign n omega t minus 5 so this minus sign represents that the current flowing through the rl load lags the voltage by an angle of 5 okay current always lags the voltage in the inductive circuit so minus 5 phi is the phase angle between v naught and i naught so z is the impedance under root of r square plus n omega l whole square and phi is given by tan inverse of n omega l divided by r phi is the phase angle so now the output power p naught is equal to v naught r m square by r a distortion factor so the distortion factor is given by uh, ratio of v naught uh, 1 rms this is the rms value of the fundamental component to the rms value of the output voltage so v naught 1 rms divided by v naught rms so already we have derived v naught 1 rms is 0.9 vdc divided by vdc so vdc vdc will get cancelled and g is equal to 0 0.9 so next to total harmonic distortion so this is given by under root of 1 divided by g square minus 1 so g is 0 0.9 so under root of 1 by 0 0.9 square minus 1 this will give you 48.43 percentage so the total harmonic distortion for single phase full bridge inverter with r load is 48.43 percentage now the harmonic factor is given by v naught n rms divided by v naught 1 rms v naught 1 rms is nothing but the fundamental component rms value of the fundamental component